Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Alex. And in today's session, we're gonna talk about debugging HTTP requests with Spring Boot. Debugging HTTP requests is something that we have to frequently do whenever we have to deal with an external API. So ideally there are contracts of how the API works, but every now and then we have to just figure something out. So we can either change the code to allow interceptors or filters to look into the request and the response, or we can come up with an external proxy that's just doing the same thing, which is nicer usually because it requires less code changes. So I would usually advocate for that. But of course, this is not always an option, especially if you have an environment that doesn't allow that, or if you have to use uh, a client environment, then that doesn't work. But still, if you can do this, this can become quite handy. So in this session, I will show you how to configure a proxy connection for the REST template and for the web client. So depending on which one you need, you can just take a look at the timestamps in the description and then just jump ahead. So the proxy that we're going to talk about is the man in the middle proxy or MITM proxy. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but if we just check out the website, then we can see there's not so much going on here. It has a command line interface, which we're going to use, and that's quite nice. It also has a web interface, if that's what floats your boat. And it also allows to replay requests, which can be quite handy if you want to run certain tests. And of course, we also need an API that we can look at. And I've picked this one. It's called Cat Facts. It's entirely free. And it will provide us with random facts about cats. And this is just made for the internet. So there's one endpoint that we're going to use, uh, which is the facts endpoint that we can use to collect well, facts. And this is pretty much it. So let's code. So we are back in the IDE. Let's take a quick look at the build file. As usual, we're using Spring Boot version 250 milestone one because we're living on the edge. And there are really just two dependencies that we need. The first one is the Spring Boot starter web because we need the REST template. And then there's the Spring Boot starter web flux for the web client. So let's take a quick look at what the API can offer us. So as I've said, there is one endpoint which is called facts and I'm piping the response into JQ. So that formats the JSON nicely so we can see something. So let's execute that. So we get back an array and there are a couple of objects and we're only really interested in the facts. And here's one. And it says cats make about 100 different sounds, dogs make only about 10. That's sad. So to not deal with the whole API here, we just pick this ID. And this is what we're gonna use from now on going forward. So let's just try that. And that looks correct. So that's just one fact. And this is what we're gonna use going forward for now. So let me just copy the whole path because we're gonna use that later. And now let's look at the application. So there's nothing special in here as usual, but we start with providing the data class to map a cat fact. Let's do this now. A cat fact, it really has just the text. And that's a string. And we are done. That's the beauty of Kotlin. So let's first define a few values that we're gonna use in this example. So the first one is the proxy host that we will use. And that's just localhost because we run it on the same machine. There's also a port that we use, which is 9000. And let's also keep track of the URI that we've just been using, which is this one. Let's also add a logger because we might want to see something. Oh yeah, private log, logger factory, get logger for the yeah. spring proxy application. And that's about it. So let's start something here. So we can use the command line runner to run the application. It goes like this. Um, and just make sure that everything is working as expected. So I'm gonna run the application quickly, just make sure it compiles and there are no errors. We can see there are many things going on already, which is because of the, the web starter and Tomcat starting. And we can see the lock over here, it says spring proxy application is alive. So let's stop the application and there are two functions that we're going to use. The first one is fun with rest template and the other one is fun with web client. 
these are the functions that we're going to use so we can switch between them i just do one here rest template and then with web client uh, we ignore the web client for now we really just focus on the rest template and to get started we actually need a rest template so let's do this now that's a beam that's a rest template um, we can ask the framework to provide us with a builder so there's a rest template of builder builder uh, we'll just return the rest template i could do this shorter but since we have to reconfigure this in a bit i'll just go for the for the long example here i'll just do return builder build and then we have the rest template so i let spring inject this over here and pass it down to the function um, rest template. So there we go. And now we can actually perform the call, uh, just making sure that the rest template works and we get the cat fact that we would expect. Fact rest template, not this one. Get for uh, let's say get for object. Pass in URI, cat URI, class Java. So that should give us the fact. And then we just lock the fact to string. All right, so let's run this. Oops, there's something wrong. Apparently I yeah made a mistake when copying the URI. Let's just fix this. Oh yeah, there's a blank space. Not good, fixed, rerun the application, should work now. So, and now we can see over here, we get the cat fact, which says cats make about whoa, 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 what we just saw. So the next thing that we're gonna do is configure man in the middle proxy. So I'm not gonna show you the details of how, how to install it. There are the docs that I can link in the description below. So I assume you have already installed it. Um, so what we're gonna use is a couple of things. As I said, we're gonna use the command line interface. Um, so that's proxy and we can specify a port. By default, I think it's port 8080, which is kind of complicated when you use Spring Boot. You have to configure it either in, in MIT and proxy or in Spring Boot. I decided to change the proxy here. So let's start this. So we can see now there's nothing going on. It would show us something that's going on here. But for this to work, of course, we first have to configure the proxy connection on the REST template. So back to our bean configuration. So we go to the REST template. Now here we're gonna change a few things. So we first have to create a proxy and this is what we're gonna do. Um, that's a Java NAT proxy. Uh, that's the default. We'll just check, uh, it's type HTTP. And now we have to provide the INET socket address, which is just the host and the port that we configured previously. Uh, with that, we need a request factory. Request factory. And that's a simple client HTTP request factory. And now we set the proxy on the request factory. Request factory proxy is the proxy. And the final thing we're gonna do is we have to change the builder. Um, I have to provide a request factory. It takes a supplier, so we can just add the request factory here and then build. And this is the entire proxy configuration for the REST template. So let's run this now. So we can see that something doesn't work and we can see that the proxy is working. Otherwise we would have seen um, connection exception, but we see that there's a certificate exception going on, which is expected because we want to invoke uh, or yeah, make a call to a HTTPS um, supported endpoint, um, but the man in the middle proxy provides a certificate, it's probably self-signed, which we don't trust yet. So what we have to do is we have to import their certificate into our key store for the JDK. Sounds a bit more complicated than it actually is, I show you how to do this. So I first have to quit the proxy. So when you install man in the middle proxy the first time and you actually run it, it will create a folder where it will store all the certificates. So usually you will find them like at least on Mac, it's over here. 
So you can see there are a couple of certificates. And now what we need to do is take the certificate and install it into the Keystone. This is kind of a long command, finally, but happily there is, of course, the history. So let me show you what, what's going on here. We use the key tool, which is used to manage the key store. We want to import a certificate. We give it an alias so we can easily find it later on, which is MIT M proxy. Uh, this is the password, it's changed it. It's the default password and apparently I should have changed it. Uh, and this is where my key store actually is. So you can see I'm using the Zulu 15 JDK, um, which as of right now seems to be the only JDK working on the new M1 Max. Um, this is the file and I want to import this certificate. So I point to the man in the middle proxy CA cert for the certificate authority. I will import this right now and I also set this to English here because otherwise it would be German and it would be hard to follow. So, all right, let me just type my password. Huh. Uh, should I trust the certificate? Yes, for now, that's okay. And now it was added. That's pretty much all. We can now review it if we want. I just skip this for here. Um, and now let's rewind the application because if all goes well, we should now trust the certificate and something should happen. But, oh yeah, now we see connection refused. And this is of course because I stopped the proxy. So let's start the proxy again. That's running now. And now let's run the application and see what happens. So we can see we got the response actually. There was no error on our seed. So now in the man in the middle proxy, we can see there's one get request and we can just go into the details here. We can see the request, the response, and some details. So the request is pretty boring. There wasn't much that we did other than invoking this endpoint with a get or sending a get request. Uh, and the response will show us everything like the headers and of course the JSON payload. So we can look into it, we can make modifications, we can now replay it if we want. Um, and yeah, that's that's pretty much it. If, if you're looking for a tool to easily debug requests, then this is pretty sophisticated already. Um, and so far we've done this for the REST template. So the next thing we're gonna do now is configure the web client. So we're gonna do the same thing that we've done before with the REST template. First of all, we of course need a web client. So web client, uh, we can ask for a builder here as well. So there's web client, looks a bit different. Web client builder, I think. Once we have a proper import, oh, that should be correct, I guess. Web client, yeah, that's it. So I'm not not showing you the default configuration here. I just skip ahead to the proxy configuration because we now have seen what it looks without. I could just invoke builder build and then I would have the web client, but we really want to start with a proxy configuration. So what we're gonna do is have a client and this is an HTTP client that I have to create and then provide the proxy details. Well, that should work. That should, of course, not be correct. It's just the client. Um, HTTP, oh, it should be this one. So, and now in the proxy configuration, what we're gonna do is we say type is uh, HTTP proxy again. Um, and now we say the host is host, the port is the port. And that's almost it. So we can use the builder, pass the connector using a reactor client, HTTP connector, passing in the client that we just configured with proxy, call build and call it a day. As simple as that. So now this web client needs to be injected over here. So let's do this now. Web client, web client, and we pass it down. I just comment this for now. We don't need it. And let's start here, web client. Um, so I prefer running um, the calls using coroutines. Um, so I do run back in here because it seems a bit nicer and it gives me a little bit less of a headache. Um, so let's call the fact, which is what client get URI 
is this one. Now we say retrieve. And since we are in a coroutine scope, I can say await buddy. And it's a cat fact again. And if all goes well, I should be able to add this. So let's rerun the application. I just stop and rerun it here. And then let's see. So we can see everything starts as expected. We can see we got the cat fact using the web client. Now let's take a look at our proxy and we can see that there is a new request uh, that's just coming in and it looks pretty much the same. It has the same response, the same request details. Um, so the proxy is working as expected. So that's pretty much wraps it up. Um, this is how you can configure a proxy connection with REST template and the web client. Whenever possible, you should go for that. Of course, that's not always possible. So in an upcoming video, I will show you how to configure an interceptor or filter where you can just do pretty much the same as with the proxy over here. So consider subscribing. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.